The words we use affect the way we think. Music is a word. Is it mandatory? Do we have to use it? Have we always used it? The answer to both is no. In my book, When Nothing is Called Music, I make a radical proposition. What if we called nothing music? How would that affect our understanding and practices, perhaps even our entire culture? This podcast features excerpts from the book. If you're interested in the book itself, it is available as a free PDF. Available through my website, bestiparavianin.com. That's probably hard to spell, but there should be a link nearby. Chapter 8 Without Music Facing Translation The problem that the solipsist has is sensory deprivation. It is as if one perceives something, but these are hallucinations the perceptual instruments firing blanks as they express their need for relationship, their fervent desire to engage the world of perception. We are wired for relationship, not for escapism. At the roots of the music mindset, is the denial of perception. The redefiners have tried to correct this denial, but its effects remain, hindering our discourse from having a shared relationship with the reality we share. With the concept of music in use, our communication cannot really reach the same level of communion that is possible in perception. Neither does this hindered communication want to. There is no motivation in the inward gaze. Nowhere to move, only static nothing. No addressing any problems of the world. No building, only the narcissistic navel. In a word, fantasizing. Wishing things weren't as they are. Reveries of eternal silence, nothingness. But facing the shared reality requires a discourse that takes relationship as its starting point. Concordant with this are concepts that describe rather than define. And so it is not a matter of yet another definition replacing a definition. Turning away from the mindset of definitions that tries to call nothing something our challenge is to face what we perceive, which, as Merleau-Ponty has shown, is a chiasm of subject and object, of attention, active, and reception, passive, and then name that. Recalling that since time immemorial, names have not been just names. They describe, they express, they tell stories, they commemorate. A name is a product of the relationship between the name giver and the receiver of that name. As chiasmatic as the perception that gives cause to the name.
Once we no longer define things as music, there will be no more territorial wars between the different borders drawn. This is not a utopia. Challenges remain, but they are relational challenges of communication, suffering one another. How does a name, description, story, memory, relate to another name of what would seem to be the same named thing? And this relational challenge of communication can give birth to yet another name, and so on a network of interrelated stories. This is the consequence of facing and dealing with something that is real. It is the uncomfortable, challenging and beautiful process of translation. The process of translation is inexhaustible because of its limitedness. It cannot be done to its end, de finire. It needs to be repeated. It is always in movement, constantly telling an ever-expanding story that strives to include every aspect of the story, every storyteller. Again, this may sound like the talk of a life coach obsessed with positive thinking, but it is not positive thinking nor utopian fantasy. It is the consequence of turning away from the fantasy of an escapist utopia and facing the relational challenges of being in the world, where we must keep talking because we cannot say it to the end. <laughs>